<laughs> I'm such a child. So if you aren't familiar with my upload schedule at this point, well, I don't know what to tell you, but um, here we go. We have part three in the three part series because I'm skipping part two because for some reason I found it easier to do part three before I do part two. I think it's mostly because I understand how to do shading more than I understand to do colors. I don't understand how to do colors. I gotta learn how to do it. I had to learn how to understand shading to do this video and I actually learned a lot making this. So hopefully you'll learn a lot from me learning a lot and th that'll make you learn. Let's just get to the goddamn video. All right, well, I'm recording this second time around because I fucked it up the first time because I didn't do my research just like me in college. All right. So first thing that I'm gonna do is we're actually going to just kind of get a circle in this Drawing area. I'm gonna zoom in so that you don't get to see them. Um... Oh, there's a flash of my last sketch I'm just gonna drag that in there and then I'm just gonna shade it a nice half tone right there and switch there And there we go so in lighting, there are actually a couple of things that we need to think about. But for this video, I'm actually going to be focusing on really two main things. So the two things that we're going to be focusing on is going to be the volume and shape of the object and where the light is coming from. Those are the two things that I'm really going to be focusing on in this video. And if need be in future videos, I'll go over some other things as well. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to want to think about is the shape of the object. Right here I have a circle, but it's not really a circle. We're actually going to make this a sphere. So I am going to drag that down. I am going to make this tiny. All right, yeah, no, that works. And basically we're just gonna to wanna to think of it as this round object like that. There, those hairlines are mediocre at best, but it gets the job done. So we have this three dimensional shape and in previous videos in the basics of drawing video that I did, I actually went over the exact types of three dimensional shapes that we're gonna use. Now, what I'm gonna do here is you can incorporate a lot of these shapes very easily into um, shading and stuff. The most difficult shape that you will shade is a sphere, which is why I'm gonna be using it for this video. So I'm just going to control Z out of here. Basically the yeeting of Photoshop. I'm not gonna say yeet again. That just makes me sound unhip and uncool. It's like a 30 year old trying to play Fortnite. And I'm basically going to now think about where the lighting is coming from. Now, there are a lot of different techniques that artists and photographers use for different lighting setups. This includes using multiple lights, reflective surfaces, yada, yada, yada. But for this one, I'm going to be using a light coming in from right here. And I'm just going to be using like a flat surface that this thing is going to be basically just all like that. That's a good enough grid. D for diploma, right? If you're not in college, you don't get that joke, and I'm sorry. So for this one, I'm actually going to be thinking about it more in the three-dimensional shape, so I'm gonna have the light coming in right there, and more or less like that. There we go. And I'm much more energetic doing this a second time around. It's almost like I stopped giving a shit. It's like I record all of my videos twice, because I'm always an awkward SOB the first time around, and then the second time around, I'm actually confident. Yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control shift I on my keyboard, which is a shortcut to inverting this little section right here on Photoshop. And by the way, I'm using Photoshop. It even says it in this upper fricking corner. So lighting, right? So I'm going to section it off real quick and do exactly the different places where you light. So the first place that you're going to want to think about is you're going to have the core shadow, which is back here like so. You're going to have the cast shadow, which is this section right here, back here. You're going to have the light, which is going to be this area right out here. You're going to have a highlight, which is actually going to be offset. I'll explain that in a second. And then you're going to have a reflective surface back here. All right, so now that you see this basically shitty Death Star on my page right now, I'm actually going to backtrack and actually go over each of these in a little bit more detail. Let's go back there, let's choose a different brush size and we're gonna go with that one. All right, so the cast shadow or the core shadow is just going to be this basic shadow or where the light really isn't going to actually touch. So it's just going to be this area right back here where the light's coming in and it's hitting this area up here. It's hitting, it's hitting, it's hitting, it's no longer hitting and that's where I'm basically gonna have the core shadow. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do the highlight. So I'm gonna take this color and I'm going to go a little bit lighter, eh, like that. What type of, what was that? And we're gonna basically 
think about where the light's gonna hit, and we're basically just gonna paste that all over that area, like so. And I think that's good. I'm gonna take some of that core shadow and just kind of twist it over. Gonna take some of that highlight, give it a little bit more flare right there. I think that's good. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna wanna do the highlight. Now for a highlight, I'm actually going to explain why the highlight is actually offset. Or let me let me restart. For a highlight, your initial thought is, all right, we have this light coming in from here. It's going out of the object. All right, right where it hits is going to be the highlight. So you'd think like right here is where you'd want to put the highlight. It's actually incorrect. The highlight then, so this is not where the highlight would go. Right here, it's not where the highlight would go. The highlight would actually be over here, right here. All right, so um, this is actually me recording a little bit later, and uh, this is basically me explaining highlights and center lights. So after doing a little bit of research, I realized I did some improper uh, vocabulary on this drawing. So I'm actually going to correct myself right now. The, um, the light source, or I was calling this source right here, um, like this area right here, the highlight, that's not actually the highlight, that's called the center light. I call them both highlights, and I apologize for that. I'm also going to explain exactly the difference between the center light and the highlight. So I'm actually going to go up here. We're going to look at it in terms of two dimensionality right now. So we have a light. Uh, let's have a facing right here going in here. And we have the center light, which is going to be right there. And you, the viewer, are going to be right here looking in like that. And the highlight is actually the reflection of this light source. So it's always going to be mirrored off of the object and bounce into your eye. So in this case, the highlight is actually going to be right around here. So it's going to be bouncing from the light source back into your eye. And these two angles are going to be exactly the same. It's not important, it's just kind of geometry, eh. But that's the reason that the center light and the highlight are in two different areas. Also, um, I mislabeled the core shadow. That's not the core shadow. The core shadow is something different that I don't really need to explain in this video. It's just kind of unnecessary for beginners, or at least it's something that is kind of hard to comprehend for beginners of shading. I'm gonna stop talking now. Anyways, back to naive me, and hopefully I don't make any stupid botched mistakes. Who am I kidding? I know I will. So we got the light. Light would hit right here. Highlight would be right around here. Okay, next thing we're going to think about is we're actually going to be doing the cast shadow. Now the cast shadow is going to be a little bit different, or is actually going to be that light, except we are going to be thinking about where the light is hitting and like that shadow that's going to be cast. Right, so the light is here, so it's going to be cast like that. It's going to be cast like that. We're going to kind of cast it out there. It's basically just going to kind of connect all those areas together like that. So I'm just going to, yeah, it's a cast shadow. So the shadow is going to be kind of in this enveloped area that's behind the object, kind of like that. So for that, I'm just going to think about, all right, so this is gonna go like right around there and we are going to drag a nice big ellipsoid kind of out back and I'm just going to shade it in. It's a terrible job, give me a second. All right, so we have this shadow right here. It's in the back. It's all right, but it's not perfect. For a proper shadow, you're actually going to want to um, think about, all right, so the farther away the object is, the um, the less, the more blurred it's gonna be. So in the back here, it's actually going to be, um, you're gonna have a fuzzier edge, basically. So like that, it's gonna be a much fuzzier edge, kind of like that there. And then up closer, it's gonna be very defined. So I'm actually going to go to a much smaller brush size and we're gonna like really define that edge right there where it's really close to the object. And then we're gonna go a little bit bigger and we're basically going to do that up there. And we're just gonna, there we go. And now we have a pretty proper shadow for this object. The next thing and the very last thing that we're gonna think about is we're actually going to think about reflected light because we do have this light coming in but we also have the light bouncing out. Now let me show you what I mean by that. So we have light coming in uh, right here, right here, and it's all hitting this shape right here. But what we're forgetting is that light also hits the ground. 
So it hits the ground right here, and then it bounces back up and reflects. And you see where it hits? It hits right here. And we're gonna have light bouncing up. We're gonna have light bouncing down, hitting here, and it's gonna go right back into that object. It's gonna hit here, it's gonna go right back into that object. It's gonna hit here, and it's just gonna bounce off, so there isn't really gonna be much back there. But it is going to be bouncing into that object, and depending on where you light, you're going to have that reflective surface bouncing light back onto the object. So we're actually going to take a look at that, and we are going to actually shade the our little sphere with light that is reflecting from the ground. So we're gonna go here, and we are going to basically just, that's the wrong side. So I'm gonna just choose like this same white kind of color. I'm actually gonna go a little bit darker. We're actually gonna go back to our base color, and I'm going to basically just lighten the ground, or lighten the area that's closest to the ground. So places, I think that's not right, probably a different size. So the light goes down and reflects up right here. And I'm just going to shade it like so. I can take a little bit of the coloration from the ground, kind of put it in there, and I'm just gonna blend it a little bit. Uh, this is just kind of like a painterly technique. But now we keep reflecting and we keep just blending a little bit and a little bit more. And there we go. We have a sphere. Ooh. The more and more I do these tutorials, the more and more I turn into an unfunny 40-year-old. And that's basically everything you really need to know about shading. Mm. Nope, you're not done talking about lighting, you dumb fuck. Futurezill has more stupid shit to spout at you. I, uh, there's a couple of things I'd need to go over. One is I actually didn't mess up with this. This isn't really the best way to uh, draw this. I guess sphere. There is still the occlusion shadow that I missed. Light reflects off of the ground and into the object from all different angles and such, um, like so. But when you get closer and closer to the inside, like right around here, uh, that light stops reflecting as much, which means that you get this more shaded area that is kind of underneath and really close between the, sh the cast shadow and the uh, shaded area of the object and that's basically going to create a slightly darker area uh, between those between kind of these two surfaces so something kind of like so something like that where you kind of get like that uh, shaded area underneath it I'm just gonna turn this down a bit like so so that would be kind of like that transition right there would be considered the occlusion shadow it's just a little detail that just kind of makes it that much more like an, I don't know, an actual sphere. Eh. Uh, now that we have that, I'm basically just gonna go over basic vocabulary for this entire object. So what we have is, we have center light, which is this area right here. We have the highlight. We have the cast shadow, regular shadow, reflected light. Um, and also, cool fun fact, and this is something I just learned because I'm an idiot and I never decided to teach myself this, I just kind of went by guessing it, is this line between the light and dark is called the Terminator. We have the Occlusion Shadow, which is basically this darker area right in here. That's a part of this cast shadow, and that is kind of this seamed area right in here. I just scribbled on everything. Oh well. Alright. Back to you, past Zill. Hopefully you didn't fuck it up again. You're, if you can practice doing this, look up some Google images and basically just go ham and practice drawing a bunch of different spheres, you've nailed it. You've pretty much learned everything you need to know about shading at a very fundamental level. And this, you will probably not need to learn a lot more on. You can expand on it, but this is such a solid foundation that most people can make some pretty impressive things just by knowing this right here. Now, this is um, a shading technique called rendering. Now, there are two different types of shading techniques or coloring or lighting and shading techniques that I tend to associate with art and drawing and I don't know, whatever the f Anywho, we're gonna go to a different uh, type of technique called cell shading. Now, cell shading is basically 
a dumbed down version of rendering. Now, cell shading is basically taking shadow, the light, highlight, the reflective surface, and the shadow, basically doing it in a solid version rather than in this um, shaded version. So I'm actually gonna do that now. And that's basically cell shading. Basically it's rendering, but you're doing less steps and you're kind of just sectioning off all of these areas. And this is a really good way to sketch. I found like um, if you're just doing like sketches and you want to get a basic idea of something, you would use probably something very similar to cell shading. Uh, one thing that I have found is that most people that I've seen who draw normally do a mix of both. So I'm actually going to do that right now. I'm actually going to create a new layer on top of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just kind of like mask off or just make this inside this layer. And I'm just going to choose like a slightly darker color. I'm going to section off that area of shadow. I'm going to section off that area of highlight. And I'm going to now go like that and just kind of color that in. Some shortcut keys that I made because I'm do that type of thing. Because I'm plan shit out. Who am I kidding? I don't. I didn't plan this video. And we're gonna have the highlight right there. And we're going to have um, the soft light kind of underneath right there. And on this layer, I'm just going to color that in. We'll just put it like so. Now for me, I uh, I tend to actually do something a little bit different where I'll just do that and I'll take an eraser tool to some of it. And I'll basically just, um, you yeah, know, like that. And I'll just kind of like, shade like erase out certain areas and it kind of gives this nice um feeling of kind of just like transition that you don't get when you just do pure cell shading so this is so most types of line work or no shit what am i talking about i talked a little about line work in the last video most types of lighting techniques is neither is neither cell nor rendering so i don't see a lot of people do pure rendering i don't see a lot of people do pure cell um, when people like more develop their styles, I actually see them do a mix of both, which is kind of what, what I know I do and what I've seen a lot of my friends do with their styles and stuff. Though I do see rendering and I do see cell shading used in both retrospects. I do recommend using a mix of both. Um, whether you lean more towards rendering or whether you lean more towards cell, that's up to you. I'm giving you the tools to make your own decisions. And from there, I think you'll be able to come up with something unique and probably pretty interesting to look at. I'm actually going to go over the drawing that I lined in, in the previous video and I'm going to shade it this time in the style that I shaded in. So I'm going to basically just skip to that and explain while I go and hopefully I won't have an identity crisis halfway through like last time. So let me start off by saying that I'm not one who likes to hide how I work. And when I'm doing my shading and lighting, like I'm gonna show here, this is exactly how I do it in most of my other art pieces. So hopefully you can take in from what I learned, maybe try to replicate it, put your own spin on it. Uh, just see what you can come up with. Anyways, let's start. So the first thing that I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to figure out where the lighting is. And I'm basically gonna have a lighting off from the left hand side, a little bit forward of the screen. And then I'm going to have this invisible reflective surface on the back. The reason I'm having this reflective surface on the back is just kind of to give off a backlight that I need to make the image really pop. One of the ways that I tend to shade is I actually use the lasso tool. It's something that I use to get the certain type of geometry that I like to see in my work. And it's a bit tedious, especially since you can't see it come together as well as you can with other types of shading techniques. But what I end up doing is I actually draw the terminator line for the entire image and then I erase. So what I ended up doing is I ended up shape or coloring in the piece beforehand, turning down the opacity, and now I'm basically drawing all the line segments of where the shadow is going to end up based on where the light source is coming from. So parts where the light is gonna hit, I'm going to basically leave the lasso tool in, and then I'm basically going to mark out the parts where light isn't really gonna touch. This ends up taking a while, so I'm just gonna speed up the process. So then I actually take the erase tool with a soft edge and I basically just start erasing. I start erasing parts that's gonna have more light and one of the ways that I do the occlusion shadow here is I basically, where the light source is closer, I have it be a little bit brighter and where the light source isn't high or where it's closer to the ground, I'm gonna have it be a little bit darker. One of the things when I'm doing the center light in this image is I inverted the select tool and I just use the other side. So what ends up happening is the highlight ends up being just where the shadow isn't. And this is a really fast and really easy way for me to shade. Now, when I'm moving on to here is I'm actually 
doing highlights in a very stylistic way. So one of the main things that I tend to do when I do highlights is I tend to think about where do I want the person to look? And this is a stylistic choice for me and I do it as such. I basically highlight the places where I want the viewer's eyes to basically focus on. So in this case, I'm doing it on the face and on the hands. And because of this, it draws your eyes and it gives, it gives a focus point. Now what I'm moving on right here is I'm basically doing the reflective surface on the back is going to be reflecting and that's going to create reflected light. And I'm starting off by doing this hard kind of light, which I didn't really like. So I actually moved to a softer gradient. And then I basically did the same technique that I did for regular shading for the reflected light on the back. And it just took a while just like normal. I inverted, erased all on the outside, and then I just selected certain parts of the inside that I wanted, and I just erased. Now the cast shadow is gonna be any place on the ground that light is gonna hit, so I just used a basic simple oval and used the premises that I laid out earlier in the video to make it fuzzy farther away from the character and a little bit more sharp closer to the character. And we're pretty much done at this point. Once that's all done, you are left with a very refined, very good looking shaded character. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, bell thing. I'm making this ending really short because I don't want to animate it. Music. Yeah.